Hey, welcome back guys. Today we are working on the clutch for the trail fire. Um, basically what we're going to be going through is I'm going to take it apart partially, uh, just this cover off. Uh, we'll see what condition the rollers are in right here and these, uh, the pin bushings, uh, if we need to rebuild it or not. Also the little buttons in here, how, how warm they are, side to side in the towers. And um, I guess we'll ultrasonic clean it and clean it up. I got this clutch, well I got the snowmobile without an engine, uh, but the clutch came with, so its condition is unknown. Um, but basically to take it apart, you take these six bolts off on the top. And when you do that, you wanna do one on each tower, or one on each set of towers and then slowly work in a circle to get the other ones off. Because this is under spring tension and it's going to want to pop up. So these first three, doesn't really matter. And these guys, uh, generally I like to keep in press down on it. You can see it's popping up a little bit. Still pressing down. I've had it before where I take this off and uh, this is actually on a 101C not a 102C but they have this stupid little uh, basically cover that goes over it. Uh, you can just kind of chuck those now because uh, it keeps a lot of the heat in the clutch but it got actually stuck on the ring and it popped up and almost hit me in the face so you gotta watch that don't keep your head straight over it but uh, we're just gonna let it up slowly okay almost done that one's gone get this one all the way. Oh, that's how you know. <laughs> the movable face should just fall right down because then nothing else is supporting it. Um, normally they pop up a little higher than this. Oh. <laughs> hey, I guess it's a good thing we took this apart because uh, this primary spring is uh, very broke, which is actually kind of surprising. I'll have to dig around and see if I have another one here. Hold on. This could be a problem. Well, these so these springs are color-coded by um, length. So it would be length this way, and then also how many pounds of force it takes to compress it. So we'll see if I have another one here. Awesome. So I found another one here. Um, uh, the trail fire and most of the John Deere's use a silver spring, uh, which I happen to have a spare of, so it looks like we're back in business. Really, I don't know if I want to rebuild this clutch or not. Um, that would involve special tools to, this is called the spider, that would spin off and then you can take that out and replace these buttons and you'd probably do the rollers in here as well um, and if you're going that far you might as well replace the arms with different bushings hmm. oh uh, one thing I was going to look at was what size weights are in here I don't know if you can see I'll show you Um, if I get it just right, you can see that there's a letter U on there. So, tuning for a Trail Fire LX. So, um, if we were to replace the weights, we'd have to find U weights. And they're just coordinated by size, and you can get a whole bunch of different weights. Um, there's different shapes of the arm, different thicknesses, weights. Um, 
John Deere actually worked with Comet on these clutches to basically they designed them hand in hand together specifically for John Deere snowmobiles and Comet then took it and was able to make it applicable to other uh, snowmobiles as well. They've got different different size tapers, different offsets this way and that way. Um, other than that, they're pretty reliable clutches. I mean, they came out in 1976 and you can still buy them brand new today. So that's that 40, 46, 48 years. I don't know, long time for a design to not change. But let's get this in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and we'll just slam her back together and put it on. You can see all the dirt just coming off. All this is is water and uh, uh, Dawn dish soap. But it's cool to just watch it plowed out like that. So now that we've got it ultrasonic cleaned, it's looking nice and shiny. Um, it moves all free. Um, you can see there's, this is something you want, I forgot to check before I cleaned it, but uh, you want to check for the play in these buttons here. Uh, that's that's a wear point and then these rollers down here you're gonna want to make sure that each one of those rolls nice and free because that's actually what your weight will ride on as your clutch is shifting and so it looks like those are all good you want to make sure there's not really any play in there uh, you want to you want your buttons to be pretty tight um, I guess you want to make sure your weights are tight both wiggling back and forth this way and then uh, back and forth this way uh, there's a little bushing in there those will wear out uh, but other than that this clutch looks pretty good so we're just gonna put it back together uh, it's not worth the whole taking it apart right now um, but to put it back together this is your primary spring that just sits right on top of there and then this is kind of a tricky part here well I I actually like to line it up. Sometimes these bolt holes get a little weird. But this will look good. I want to have the deer logo looking at me. It's cool that they put this little deer logo on it and it actually says John Deere. None of the other comments say that. Just the one that came on John Deere's. And so you have to take and now you're going to pull this up and press this down. And this is where it can get a little dicey. Just line up one bolt. And make him, make sure he gets in. And you're gonna do one on each powder. Or one on each triangle. One on each triangle. One one on each corner so that way you hold each side down. You do have to have quite a bit of hand strength to do this. Otherwise, I'm not really sure how else you could do it. Um, basically, it's just having enough to press down. Uh, so then, after we get them all started, take the wrench and just work them down. Going in a crisscross pattern here.
So as you can see, we've still got free movement, which is what you want. Uh, now we'll take and torque these down. I'll find out the torque spec here. All right, the book says to torque them down to these cap bolts down to 12 foot pounds. So that's what we're gonna do real quick. And then uh, we'll be done with the clutch. Next, we're gonna put it on the snowmobile. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention was um, this taper shaft. We should take some emery and just lightly clean it out. Um, it's Mine has just a tiny bit of corrosion in there, but any any sort of goop or gunk or rust is going to screw up with your joint to the crankshaft. So just, this is just some emery cloth. Just take and shine it up. Nothing too hard. And that looks good. Then before we take our crankshaft, or take and put this on the crankshaft. Uh, I'm gonna take some acetone and clean it out in there and actually clean the crank stub of the crankshaft off too, just so we get a nice good uh, contact, no dust or dirt or anything in there. And it actually does make a difference because these tapers are so precise. Um, anything in there and uh, you could possibly throw it off one way or the other and then uh, you'll be out of balance and you'll wreck your engine.